here in Canada back in 1991. That's a ways back in terms of this subject and the information we have. Canadian Safety Code 6 allows much higher pulse level. Remember, it's the pulsing that's the problem here. Then even Sweden, that's where cell phones were invented and now represent a national health emergency. Of course, cumulative exposure is not addressed in Canada. But don't worry, the cell phone tower emissions up there are based on computer simulations done by the industry at the time of application. They're not measured. Human cells exposed to common cell phone frequencies at one-tenth the power levels of most cell phones activate a chemical switch linked to many cancers within 10 minutes. University of Washington researchers were hired by the US military to see how safe this was and they found out that a 2.4 gigahertz portable phone or cell phone increases the DNA breaks in our brain cells after two hours of exposure at one-fifth of the FCC's safety limits. So two minutes of cell phone exposure, you're on the phone for two minutes, and your blood-brain barrier opens. And these proteins come in, the albumin comes in, pharmaceuticals come in, things that that barrier was supposed to keep out. Two minutes on a cell phone. What happens? Nerve damage happens. Neurons are destroyed. Diseases like multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's happen because of these proteins allowed into the brain. Parkinson's disease happens. But blood-brain barrier leakage and potassium and calcium ion flux in human cells are ignored by the SAR. They are ignored by Health Canada. So are modulated signals. And this is the crux of it here, folks. Modulation is what allows information to piggyback on different carrier frequencies. All wireless signals are modulated to carry speech, video, and the control signals to make this thing work. Most of these digital modulation systems involve very sharp changes and rapid changes in signal strength over a wide range of frequencies that are biologically active at radiation levels many orders of magnitude lower than government guidelines. And our bodies take in not only the energy, but the information, the jagged spikes of information. Our bodies turn these signals into electric currents, just like the antenna on our cell phone, except this is a five foot, five inch antenna, six foot antenna. We're huge antennas, again, filled with conductive fluid. And we send these currents flowing through our tissues and our veins to every part of the human body. And I can tell you, looking around at a lot of fatigued people, we are burning out a lot of radio antennas, a lot of human radio antennas. Over time, this radiation damage gathers momentum like a runaway train. Call after call after call, living near that cell phone tower day and, and night. Depending on which cells are affected, we're looking at brain damage, infertility, hearing loss, cataracts, general malaise, ADD, autism, miscarriages, birth defects, leukemia, autoimmune illnesses, cancer, sudden aggression, depression, or early Alzheimer's. I'm not saying these are caused solely by microwave and RF radiation. Of course, there are other factors, chemical factors, pollution factors, stress is a major factor. But cell phone and portable phone and wireless, other wireless radiation are directly linked in clinical test after clinical test to these diseases. So we're cruising along resonating with Mother Earth at 10 hertz or 10 cycles per second. Our heart's going kathump kathump at two cycles per second. So that's cool, except microwave radiation sends out electromagnetic waves from 300 million to 300 billion cycles per second. It's shaking cell syndrome. Because every cell in our body is whipped back and forth millions or billions of times per second. Guess what happens? Within minutes, one or both strands of that double helix, you've seen Crick's double helix picture of DNA, one or both strands in that ladder is broken. Within minutes, the body can repair most single strand breaks, but the body cannot repair double strand breaks, and that's what got 
Dr. Carlo and others fired. The Indian Journal of Human Genetics just came out and said, hey, 40% of human cells taken from cell phone users show DNA damage. 40%. So it's no wonder last year microwaves were, were classified as a chronic poison by the National Institute of Health. Funny thing, though, they continue to proliferate. One of my biggest motivations of coming down here today and speaking with you folks is I particularly wanted to address the women. I wanted to say very loudly and very clearly that no human tissue is more sensitive to radiation, any kind of radiation, than female ovaries. So now pregnant women must not only refrain from drinking and smoking, they must also avoid portable phones, cell phones, wireless routers at home in the office, cell phone towers, and ultrasound scans, except in the most compelling emergencies, assuming, of course, that you know you're pregnant. Dr. Barnett warns that the womb saline fluid is highly conductive to radio frequencies and microwaves. Pelvic structure and amniotic fluids promote deep penetration of microwaves that are easily absorbed by the fetus. That was the big Cicero study in Australia in 1994. In 1994, he and others were finding that all, all, all fetuses show growth retardation from cell phone exposure. And the pictures in my book of the woman with the laptop on her belly. Female offspring exhibit impaired learning ability. Males showed hyperactivity. We've known this since 1994. Another giant study, 13,000 kids, found that pregnant women who talk on a cell phone just twice a day profoundly impact their child's behavior and ability to form social relationships. So after all of this insult, the kid comes into the world and instantly gets a rifid tag strapped onto her ankle, and mom gets a matching wristband, and now they get to have this continuously vibrating 134,000 cycles per second. Then we take the child home and we broil that child alive, literally, in an electromagnetic uh, magnetic soup found in most homes. Not just the routers, gigahertz baby monitors so we can tell when the kid finally dies from all this exposure. Home security systems. I'm serious, cordless phones, clock radios, clock radios next to your bed. Get rid of it, extremely dangerous. Funny though, doctors still can't explain this huge epidemic and growing epidemic of sudden infant death syndrome. Maybe they're not looking in the right place. Maybe this thickening electrosmog is interfering, maybe, with the weak currents that drive tiny cells rapidly dividing tiny cells, and govern heart rates. Autopsy brain tissue from SIDS baby shows that a loss of serotonin might be behind crib death. Guess what? Electromagnetic fields inhibit serotonin. And as soon as the cordless phone is removed from the bedroom and from the neighboring houses and apartments, infants' heartbeats return to normal. Of course, many women today go in, and pregnant women go in, get ultrasound photographs of their fetus just when their cells are most vulnerable, rapidly dividing. And you've seen the pictures. The reason why the kid's grimacing and shaking his fist is because he's got a 747 going through the womb. Don't do this. Please don't do this. Studies show a possible correlation between prenatal ultrasound exposure and dyslexia delayed speech development and reduced birth weight, as well as many cognitive and de developmental problems. Oh dear, ranging from learning difficulties to autism and epilepsy. S same with cell phones, same with portable phones. This isn't just theory, folks. In 1970, before cell phones and wireless really took off, one out of 10,000 children in North America were diagnosed with autism. That's a lot, one in 10,000. By 2007, with wireless really gaining speed here, it was one out of every 166 children. That's a 6,000% increase. One in every six children is now diagnosed with a neurological disorder. Like, what's going on? 